like when I went to Bergheim recently to see um, DJ Harvey um, for that weekend in Berlin, I specifically went on my own because I knew no one else would want to go, right? It was a random thing, but Harvey playing in Bergheim. I'm not sure if anyone else would care. Well, should I make them care? I want to go myself. The Bergheim is always a great place to go on your own anyway. So I went. So I'm sure Airbnb has a lot of uh, data about the amount of people that go, that use Airbnb and that travel solo. So I think a lot of this has to look has to do with that person and also the other kind of people who are, you know, the, the person that comes along, that's not too sure about it. They're going to see that show and be like, oh yeah, shit, this is what my friend's always talking about, isn't it? Oh, this looks awesome. And then kind of go from that way. And of course, couples as well, kind of, you know, you love Airbnb because you get to stay in, you know, a person's amazing home and you get to kind of, you know, tap out for a week or so with your partner and hang out. But yeah, that look, that's, that, that seems fucking awesome. I'm a big fan of it. Um, I'm hoping we'll see more of it. I'm interested to see how they develop the actual app and how they kind of use that. Um, let me see if I can get that story up from Airbnb, uh, Tours, Berlin, Resident Advisor. Let's see if I can get it. And I'll read this to you quickly too before we move on. There's a really cool article I saw about it. Yeah, so here we go. Um, this is an article that I saw that I thought was interesting. <laughs> Berlin promoters are fucking hating it so much. So there's this an article from Resident Advisor kind of going off from what we spoke about earlier. So um, Resident Advisor headline says, we're, we're a stop on a ridiculous human safari. Berlin promoters respond to Airbnb's club tours. All right, here we go. Um, this is from 5th of April, but again, I'll link in the show notes for you guys to check out for yourselves. Uh, there we go. Uh, two Berlin clubs allegedly visited by the Berlin Affiliated Experience Tour, that's what they're called, of the city's electronic music scene have spoken to Resident Advisor. Airbnb is offering multiple Berlin experiences, but they do this everywhere. It's, all, it's When you go on the website, you can see they've got experiences, they've got homes, they've got tours. It's all on there, right? And like I said before, I'm, I've heard loads of people, loads of kind of creative entrepreneurs using that service and kind of, and kind of, um, so using a service in order to kind of promote the club culture or the you know whatever culture is going on around this in a city and kind of being a go-to person you kind of you give, i think you get a percentage or whatever people pay for it from the airbnb i'm not sure how much percentage they take maybe maybe it's 30 percent airbnb taking keep the rest i'm not too sure but anyway it continues um uh, the tours in question called Club Like a Local, Berlin Underground, and Discover the City's Techno C Club Scene are just two of many offered through Airbnb Experiences, which provides personalized tours, workshop, and other activities hosted by local guides. Other experiences in Berlin include river cruises, street art tours, and Google Cache reveals a unavailable and now unavailable New York club experience. Awesome, right? The club tours prom promise to prepare guests for a night of dance music before bringing them to a club. Usually, it, and again, this isn't really that um, that um, um, far flung because if you've ever used, uh, again, if you're a solo traveler like myself and you use a website called meetup.com, you'll know that they have a lot of uh, meetups on that website that you can effectively go and you know hang out with people that are also traveling solo or people that are in the in the that live in the city and, and they're and they're alone they want to meet new people and expand their social group whatever it may be but they also have the ability to kind of go to specific things so if you're into comedy they might put on a comedy night they'll might there might be a comedy night that they specifically uh partner with the club promoter with or the promoter that's putting it on and they would, I don't know, they, they might work out a deal where the people from Meetup get in for a discounted price or you get in and you get a free drink or whatever it may be, right? And I remember I went to one where we did, we did like a bar crawl. I think it was in Barcelona when I did my half marathon. That was really good. You went, went to different bars and again, they had different they had different deals then on that day. And I think it was a random, I think it was like a really early time in the day. So let's say that, let's say 3 p.m. or 5 p.m. when there's not that many people in the bar. So for the for the bar for the bar owners themselves it's good for them because you know they get to sell some drinks it gets to be a bit busy you know usually bars um, rely a lot on the optics of like how it looks on the inside because people sometimes walk by and think oh that looks cool and they want to pop in blah 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 so this thing has been happening for a while but Berlin have kind of I mean Airbnb have kind of like taken it a step further by really tapping into the kind of uh, millennial market and, and providing tours that are really really hyper specific like again with the with the Berlin electronic music scene anyways continues. According to reviews left on Airbnb, guests meet guides at a bar or in some cases a guide's house for a briefing, which is awesome. The guides also help guests select clothes that will improve their chances of entry. I don't think that's anything bad. Could people do it anywhere on Google? You can just go on Google now and find out, oh, how do I get into Berlin? How do I get to Bergheim? How do I get to Panama Bar? And it'll tell you, like, and people will run through it. And it's good because at the end of the day, most of these, even on Reddit, the the subreddit techno, right? Go on it. It's fucking awesome. Great, great subreddit. I think it's reddit.com forward slash r forward slash techno. Really, really cool subreddit. And there's those people on there that live in Berlin who will tell you, who will kind of really be super blunt about how you should act and how you should carry yourself in Berlin clubs. And, you know, the whole 
a law or mystery behind Bergheim has kind of seeped through to other clubs anyway. Everyone does, everyone selects at doors, everyone selects um, at the door in Berlin for the most part. They don't like, you know, you can't buy a ticket in advance. If, if, if they don't like your vibe, you don't get in. You just have places you can go into, but that kind of um, high bar of entry it allows people to be more, it, allows, it, it encourages people to be on their best behavior. And if you go on Google and you type in how to get into a Berlin club, the thing you'll find most likely is locals or people that have been there previously telling you, hey, be on your best behavior. Don't be too drunk. Don't be too high. Don't be a new, whatever it may be. There's things that people will say to you on, on, on online or you'll see read online that are kind of, you know, great tips and tricks. And if they tell you, oh, wear a certain dress or be aware that the club you're going to is like a gay sex club, um, you might not, you know, if you wear a certain item of clothing, they might not like you. Or if you're not that, if you're not that way inclined, probably don't go there because you're not going to make people feel comfortable. It's all good things, I guess, isn't it? It's not. I, I don't see anything that's anything bad about it. Um, and also, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's increasing people's chances to get in. One guy even offers to teach dance moves. Wow, drinks and entry. Okay, drinks and entry to the clubs are not included in the tour prices, which can cost more than seventy euros for four hours. <laughs> Again, I don't think that's too bad. It's a, it's a well, it's a good investment. If you're going there, if you're again, I'm a solo traveler, but I go on my own, and I'm very, I'm, I'm aware of the scene. I've been in the scene for a while. I know the music. I know the people in the scene. I'm aware of the promoters, the club nights, the bars, and stuff. I'm very, I, I am, I have all the information needed in order to kind of not make a fool of myself when I go to these places. But if you're somebody that's kind of just got into this and you've kind of been exposed to your first big electronic music acts like Dax J or something like that, a festival you went to randomly, and all of a sudden you're digging in deep and you're finding out who Gerdy Anson is, you're finding out who Nina, uh, Nina Kravitz is, you're kind of just going through, like, wow, 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 wow. You, it's, it's quite good that someone's providing you with this service that's teaching you all these things. But, you know, somebody telling you how to do um, a dance move in fucking um, Berlin and stuff is really funny because it reminds me of this uh, video that I saw ages ago, right, of this young lady. I hope I can find it here. There's this great video I saw of this girl dancing to techno in her bedroom. Let me see if I can find it. It was really good because it was fucking awesome. Techno dance moves. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, there was a girl doing it. Not 2019. This is a really stupid one. But it was a girl that I found that I thought was awesome. Oh, yeah, here it is. Yeah, I got it. 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 So I remember finding this. Oh, it's only 10 months ago. Okay, fair enough. Maybe I thought it was, it was sooner than that. But yeah, there's this great girl. There's this girl that's got this amazing video. Again, I'll link in the show notes. So you don't have to pay, you know, 70 for euros. Someone teaches you how to dance. That teaches you how to dance techno. And it's fucking banging, right? I'll get up here on the screen. Let me let me hide this for a moment there. So this one is called How to Dance Techno. Right? And it's by... And it's by a girl called Mitara Boy. But I'll, I'll link it in the show notes for you guys to check out. Um, on the screen here it says some dance moves or all dance moves um, seem weird for those who never who were never in techno parties but really the most of them also me are dancing like this and we love it so please don't laugh at people dancing like this just let them enjoy and feel the music of course man here we go here she is right it's fucking awesome check this out simple steps side to side classic Test the shoulders of course Oh, love it, love it. Side to side. Yeah. And she's got a great outfit on too, by the way. Like, ripped jeans with the sleeve, on the knee, sorry. Wallet chain, a bra, knit top, double set. Awesome. Yeah. I want to go to techno party now. Swing your hips, of course. Yeah. Woo. Step and use your butt. I like that one. Step hard and hands up. It's a really cool video. I recommend you check it out. Push away. But anyway, that, that's basically the main premise of the video. I won't bore you with all of it. Um, but I'll link in the show notes. But anyway, let's get back to this article. Keep getting distracted. Um, so basically, this article back on Resident Advisor. Um, According to the reviews left on the Airbnb, the tours visit some of the Berlin's best known venues, including Grace Muller, which is fucking awesome Kit Kat club which i haven't been to actually i don't think i've been to Kit Kat club since i've been there the grish is fucking one of my favorite places to go to it's the original for me it's uh, the home of the club kid you're gonna find all the some of the best outfits i've ever seen in my life i've been in grish Muller. like fucking awesome and obviously it's a great site as well it's a really sprawling place you can hang out 
where all the mat is it water tank or whatever it's called there there's a massive like jungle gym sort of contraption thing on the outside you can sit on the lake and look out and mung out on the river and shit um super cool um anyway it continues Grish Muller, a sprawling club in a former New England grain mill, recently hosted DJs such as Rod Hard, Ellen Alien, and Intergalactic Gallery. Sorry, Intergalactic Gary. While Kick Hat Club is co ed, fetches spot, it's home of the popular techno party Gagan. Paul Temple enjoyed playing there so much it inspired one of his best known tracks. Our work is to create a safe, playful environment where people can have fun and be themselves with no one to judge them, uh, Greg and Promoter told RA. It hurts me that to hear that we became a spot on a ridiculous human safari for people who think that they can buy anything without having any idea about what's going on inside a club or how too much it works. But that's not really, that, that's not fair. I understand what he means. I get it. If you're a club and you've been put on this list, it may be, it does feel a bit cheapening. You can feel a bit like, ugh, this is a bit yucky, right? I get it if you're the club promoter, the club owner. But I think we have to be... Um, as much I think we, we do quite well as a as as fans of techno and as um real supporters of the scene and we buy the records and we go to club nights, we buy drinks, um, we attend lectures, we we, we are really we're a good community, right? We put our money where our mouth is and we support the people that we love. But I also think we're really good at also making sure that we police our own for the most part. Like even in clubs in London, I've seen quite a real I've seen a real big increase in people just being sensible in the club, on the dance floor. I've seen people helping people out, even if they're girls and not being creepy about it, helping them out with water, making them OK, um, making sure they can if they want to sit down. Um just generally being a good sport and policing people. And if there's shitheads in there, like telling the bouncers to get them out, just really good people in the sport. I've, I've seen it overall. I've seen that abundance. But I think there's also needs to be an understanding that we all don't come into the scene via the same way, right? We all don't come into it being hyper nerdy geeks, uh, looking at random tracks on, on Discogs or searching for clubs on YouTube that you've heard about and then looking at videos of these grainy, horrible videos filmed in a fucking potato and then maybe booking a flight there, going there randomly and checking it out like I did with, with fucking Robert Johnson. I read this article about Robert Johnson, resident advisor. It got me inspired. Um, I randomly booked a flight to go to Frankfurt and end up going there and going to see Ricardo Bello Lobos one weekend, right? Not everyone does that. Some people come into electronic music, like I said before, like, you know, because they went to go, they went to Coachella, for instance, and they saw a hyper commercial uh, DJ set from one of the best known electronic artists who's maybe kind of progressed into the mainstream. And then that maybe got them a bit interested. And then they saw a collaborator that, that that person did a track with. And then that made them dig a bit more deeper. And then they found out about the Bergheim for an article on The Guardian or one of these working broadsheets. And that got them interested. And they don't really have much of a, have much of a knowledge base but they're interested, they want to come along. I, I don't think you should tell them, no, you need to study more, you need to be outside more in order to kind of come in. But let them come in, right? Let them see what it's about. I think some, I think sometimes the best experience, especially electronic music-wise, is maybe going to Berlin and just getting known everywhere, right? Nine, 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 nine. Not tonight, not tonight, not tonight. Everywhere you go. That might be a good ed education because just standing in the queue, just being around the stuff, just being outside the club, hearing the music, seeing the vibe, seeing how calm everyone is, seeing how chill everything is, seeing how professional, the, it, seeing how the love, seeing people come up to bouncers that they've known all, like, I don't know, for 10 years and they become to the same place every Saturday, giving them a big hug and walking in. That kind of appreciation, will that will give you a big understanding of the scene just by getting the nose all over the place. And I think sometimes even going to things like this, it's... I think when you're a fan and you go to and you book a tour with uh, a, a discovery tour on Airbnb and you get there and you discover how naff it is, you'll quickly know where what you should and shouldn't be doing, right? You'll figure out, you'll be like, ah, oh, this is super naff. The people that you're around, because I'm sure the people that are going on these tours aren't the most well-educated in the scene, right? But they have an interest. And if you really want to develop your interest, you'll go to this thing first and then you'll kind of, you know, it'll be your first step in. So I think if you're the promoter and you're a club owner, I get it. It's a bit naff. It's a bit disgusting. It's a bit yucky. But I think for the person on the outside who's kind of discover an electronic music festival because they went to see somebody because they went to go see some i don't know they got to they went to go see martin garrick gertrix or something like that at um, tomorrowland and then by chance because they're waiting for that guy to play they happen to you know stumble across i don't know charlotte the wit or somebody else le less alone than that and then that got them interested in techno i think it's quite a good thing to get them involved in and i get it if you're the club owner it's annoying but i don't know give people a chance man uh Human Safari who think that they can come and buy anything by having an idea or how much it that's something that's not they're not really buying because again you pay for the discovery tour but it still doesn't guarantee your entry. I don't think any of these promoters again if you're doing if you're doing a discovery tour and you're the tour um, provider tour operator you can't really provide an authentic Berlin or electronic music scene experience without getting without you can't do it by trying to go to a club and arrange 
for them to give you preferential treatment to get in. It's not going to happen because the places that you'll want to go to to have that happen will, will straight away say, no, get the fuck out of here. So you're going to have to make it, you have to, it's going to, be, it's going to be real. You have to be like, hey, you'll give me your money so I can brief you. I can give you some idea on the music. If you meet me at my house, I can play some records. We can maybe watch a couple of clips. I can watch a couple of interviews. I can show you some magazines. I can show you some merch, some things I got, some flyers from previous parties, whatever it may be. I can give you my education, right? Because we've all, we all, I sometimes think we take, we take our experience for granted. Like I know for sure in my like humble abode, I've probably got tons of experience, tons of materials I can give somebody that can really give them an insight on what um the Berlin experience is all about right um you should probably just probably just watch um don't forget to go to sleep that legendary uh Berlin club scene documentary from back in the day that's probably the best education you want to get but the person just say hey I'm gonna you're gonna I'm gonna take your 70 euros but I'm gonna give you education we're gonna go to all these nice record stores we're gonna get maybe get a beer hang out sit around like you know have that what's that tea that everyone drinks in Berlin and shit um we're going to chill out, but then I can't guarantee you entry with these places. We're going to go to a couple of places. Some of you will get and some of you won't. I've got a list of places that I want to get to. If you don't get into there, don't worry. It's Berlin. There's loads of clubs. And we're going to try it. We're just going to get down the list and see what we get into. But, you know, it's going to be the experience. I think that's cool. You know, because it's, you know, it's impossible they can go to Kit Kat, Grease Muller, Panorama Bar, all these kind of places and try and get a deal. They're not going to tell them. They're not going to tell them to jump off a cliff, innit? Anyway, it, it, it continues. As a former history student, I think it's great to offer insights of Berlin history and club talk and club culture for tourists um johan we caught booker at griezmann said but the way it's advertised on airbnb is ridiculous mostly foreigners who moved to the city in the last few years offering a but oh okay that's what he's for that's okay mostly foreign so so i guess for the people that live in for the people that live in berlin or who are original berliners they get annoyed because it's foreigners that are actually doing these tours who don't know that much about the scene anyway we're not really plugged in i get it in that respect fair enough that makes sense mostly foreigners who moved to the city in the last few years uh, by charging eight euros for a chit chat in a bar, then sending people to random clubs. <laughs> we continues. I think it can be quite a scam if people pay up to eight euros only to have a one on one to hour lecture at a bar and then get sent to a club to have their own experience. People should definitely be able to learn about Berlin's club scenes, but paying this much only for advice instead of just going to discover a venue party by themselves misses out on the personal experience. Uh, again, not really, man. I don't agree. I don't think everyone's the same. We're not all built the same, man. I don't think. There's a huge swath of people out there who would want to go to Bergen and Panorama, but just don't have the guts, man. They've heard all the horror stories. And again, like, think about it from uh, an average Joe's point of view, right? Most people, for the most part, if they have the money to go somewhere, they can go. Whether it's a shop, whether it's a cinema, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a bar. If you want a drink, you can go to this bar, you can get in and you can have a drink. For the most part, the only time you're, own, any, the only time you're, never, the only time you're not going to get in is if they, I don't know, they um they uh they're they're being a bit picky with the ID and shit, right? Oh, you don't have your ID, you can't get in court. But for the most part, if you have money, you can go to most places. So to cut, so to come to a place like Berlin and to suddenly be inundated with these responses that you can't come in because you just don't like your vibe, it really fucks with your head, right? It doesn't really you don't really compute it properly. Oh, it doesn't make sense. But I want to come into a bar. I want to come to the club. Like I want to spend money here, but don't, uh, we don't care about your money. You're not gonna come in. So it takes time to really understand where that's coming from and to appreciate what it's about. But sometimes people just don't want to go through that embarrassment of queuing up that long in a bar in outside of a nightclub and then being told you can't come in because you're not the particular, you don't look like the people that are in there, right? Um, that's a bit annoying and it can kind of feel a little bit, you know, hard to kind of get, um, to kind of figure out and to kind of hate that response to somebody. But for somebody to kind of, you know, take time out of their day to meet at a bar, give you a lecture about the scene, give you some experience. Again, it's stuff that you won't know and, and, until you speak to a clubber, speak to somebody that actually goes out. And they might be, you might be the only person that they've actually spoken to that is actually from the scene. Because again, how are you going to meet these people if you don't go out anyway? So you make the, you take, you, you have the guts in general to kind of book a tour, which is a big thing. And then you get to the thing and someone's telling you you can't because it's, a, I don't know, man. I see it from both ends. I just see it from both ends. Anyway, it continues. The tour disagrees with the statement. It says, we are trying to help people fight against the corporate gentrification by inspiring more people to move here. Exactly. Agent one, the club guys, club like a local said they burn underground. Being able to pay the bills from doing what we are passionate about enables us to invest more time in positivity. Of course. Because, again, they're sending them to all the cool places. They're not sending them to naff places. They're not trying to get deals. They're, 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 and, again, I'm pretty sure they when they meet them for a chit-chat in a bar pre, prior for the lecture, they told them quite specifically, hey, you're not going to get in, right, most of these places. But just go there with an open mind, open heart, and try and just, like, absorb everything around you and see what it's all about. And then from there we'll go. Like, And, again, the dress thing is very important. It's not something we I don't think about. I always think about when I go. Um, the attitude is very important. 
I mean, I mean, like, I've never been more sober when I go to a club than I, when I'm in Berlin. Never in my life. Here in London, like, most places, like, you pre-drink at home, you pre-drink on the way there, you pre-drink on the train, like, fucking Diane Abbott. You're always on it. But then in Berlin, there's a most, it's a most, it's a place I'm, I'm the, probably the most sober. I come back with hardly a hangover when, I, when I'm in Berlin because of the idea that you're going there to experience this club culture, to have an appreciation for the music, to show love to the DJ, to be a good uh, a f- good fellow clubber, to your, a good fellow club mate to all the other clubbers that you're in the club with. Um, Asian and Australian DJ moved to Berlin three years ago, runs the tours in with Martin, a 20th cent- a 28th century German who has lived in Berlin 14 years. Both had a fairly successful white collar career before la- laundering launching their tours they declined to provide Ari with any names of the clubs they've visited on tour we work very hard on making sure everybody is going to the, be a positive contribution to the party we, we have no problems with rejecting and refunding those who don't feel good we also place specific emphasis on helping our guests without the choices this of course helps with entry but more specifically I find it very important in making both the guests and the clubbers feel comfortable of course based on our guests so far we have noticed that solo travelers especially females and couples uh, enjoy having a safe friendly this is what I'm talking about again Let's take away myself, right? And that's a specific line there. Based on our get on our guests so far, we have noted noticed that solo travelers, especially females and couples older than thirty, particularly enjoy having a safe, friendly crew to go out with. And that's some that's really important because I think most of these people that are objecting to it are like myself, right? We're quite independent. We can do our own thing. I go traveling and I go clubbing on my own regularly. I probably end up doing it this weekend. I do it most of the weekends. I love it. It's, it's a, one of my favorite things to do. Most of the reason because I don't really have people to go with, right? And I don't want to, and if you, I do want, I, ha, I do have to go with, I don't want to burden them with taking them to a place that they don't really want to go to just because they want to be my friend. Cool. But there's some people out there who don't have that, you know, um, ability to do that. You know, if you're a couple in your 30s, but you want to have a good night out and get a bit munged out and go see a good DJ, but all your friends don't want to do it. How do you go to these places and feel comfortable? You want to go with a bit of a crew. You don't want to just hang out just together. You know, you're together all the time. You want to have a bit of experience, but you don't want to leave each other alone and go and explore the club. You want to just be together, but with a maybe a, a loose group of people. What better than go on a club tour, go to a few record stores, have the people um, bring some clothes with you, maybe, or whatever, or some outfits that you're thinking of wearing, have the guy kind of go through what he thinks will work and won't work, and then maybe try and and see if it works out on on a night out. I think that's fucking perfect. It's really, really good. I think it's a really good idea. I don't see anything wrong with it. And especially when it comes with girls. That's what I always think about a lot when I go out, because I think there must be a whole bevy of girls out there who are like me too, who have that ability, who have that really, who have that lust, that wanderlust to go out and go and travel, and go and experience these club cultures, but then they also have that unfortunate side of their brain that clicks on, it's like, oh, I'm a girl, I'm alone, I can't go, I can't go here, I can't go there. Imagine going to a place like this. Super amazing. I think it's really cool. I'm a big fan of it, man. I think they're doing it the right way. Um, anyway, it continues, compared to the average night out in most of other places around the world, clubbing in Berlin is, abs- is, an absolutely, a, is absolutely a circus. Uh, um, that's why we love it, and most beautiful and immersive freak show is always on the dance floor, I agree. Rules of Airbnb hosts in Berlin are among the most restrictive in the world. Many residents blame the rental service for rising rent prices, a sentiment reflected in the rules imposed by a local government, which requires some landlords to obtain a permit before the use of this. Uh, the impact these clubs tours may have on the electronic music scene isn't clear. It's going to be good. It's going to be more people coming there, more people wanting to get involved in the scene, more parties, more club nights. It's, some, it's great. Like, I, I don't see the problem with this. The only problem that could happen is if, again, is if some of the clubs decide to kind of um, sell out and start having deals with these club promoters, right? These tour providers and start providing entry for these people. Oh, you come and you have a particular wristband. That's when it's going to get cheap. But Berlin is a bit Berlin because it has that standard, that high standard of like everyone is de- democratic, right? If you don't know anyone, you're not on the list. There is no guest list unless you're on the list. Um, you stand in the queue, you behave. You dress a certain way, you act a certain way on the dance floor, you conduct yourself a certain way in the things that you're doing, where whatever they may be. It's all about that standard. And then everything is fine. Like, when's the last time you've been to a Berlin club and seen a fight? Like, come on. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't happen. Even a glass on the floor. Like, it doesn't happen. People are so courteous. They go and put their glass back on the, you know, on, on the bar. They put stuff in the bin. They go to the toilet. Like, it's just amazing. So I don't think there's a way that this can be cheap. And unless, literally, like I said, like, the clubs come down and start, like, selling themselves out to these stores. But I think the, the discovery tours are being quite honest. Like, you know what I mean? They're not really selling anyone any dreams. Um... Wink, Wink says from Griezmann said, um, I don't really see these concept evolving into something damaging for the clubs. It's too niche and it's always going to be called out by people from the scene. Uh, Boyko said, the Gagan promoter is less optimistic. I'm happy to confirm 
you that those guys will never get to kick out anymore. Of course, open to tourists, but they have to act like everyone else, fit in the club and respect our work. And But how will they know who they are? Uh, what, are they going to wear a t-shirt or something? I don't know. That's a weird thing to say. No, gonna, uh, well, I get it. I get it. I get it. You don't, you, again, some belly clubs are so, they have such a privilege, they have such a, they have such a good reputation within the scene. They've done so much work. They've contributed. To, they've contributed so much. They provided people with so many amazing moments that they can actually get. They can legitimately get get away with saying no to certain people all year round, and it not affect their bottom line. They're completely fine, right? They have a hard group of hard loyal group of followers um, of pro- regulars who come in who are going to support them regardless. But so I get it. But you can't do that thing in London. You can't. You die in a minute, man. Unfortunately, because the license holders are so shit. You absolutely die. Um, of course, we have been notorious, but they have to act a certain way like everyone else. We don't want the curious people. We don't want curious people invading our spaceship because they have the arrogance to pay 10 times the ticket value to someone. What? That's a weird line to say. We don't want curious people invading our spaces. Isn't that the whole premise of going, getting involved in the electronic music scene? Just because they have the arrogance to pay. But again, I get it. I get it, man. I get it. Like I said, if I was living in there, I'll probably have the same sort of thing. If I was a couple of months, I'll have the same sort of thing. But yeah, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think in general, they're doing it the right way. The Discovery Tour seem like they're doing it the honest way. They're giving people lectures beforehand. They're telling them about the history of the music. They may be showing them zines, flyers, album covers, uh, playing them some vinyl maybe, going through their outfits. I think it's all good. I think it's all good. I think it's all good. Anyway, um, and also, how many times have you been to the Bergheim and you see the group of tourists going there for the first time and just you take one look at them and you're like, why do you bother coming? Why do you think that? And why did you make that assumption in your head? Because you saw what they were dressing. You saw how they're acting in the queue. You saw what they look like. It's like, why would you bother coming here? Like, you've got those fucking Kanye shutter shades on, some some silly hoodie on, socks. Like, you just look, why would you come here? You're never going to get in, innit? You, you always, you think that straight away. Like, why would you, and then, and then now somebody's trying to provide a service to stop that person being embarrassed, stop that makes them making a fool of themselves or wasting their time, and now you're annoyed by it. Like and they and they and they're hopefully gonna kinda teach them how not to act a fool. It's all it's all a win. We all win at the end of the day. And then we end up with less cocks on the dance floor. Simple as that. Not cocks that way, but you know, less like dickheads basically. Anyway.